Hi guys, this video is inspired by the Parallax in JavaScript game from Frank Laboratory. Continuation of my previous video on JavaScript spy sheet. In the last video, we built an animation for our characters. And today, we create a background with Parallax Motion. So, what is Parallax Motion? The Parallax Scrolling is a technique in which the background moves at a slower pace than the foreground. This result in the 3D effects as the character moves to the left or the right, adding the sense of depth to your game. I bet you like this kind of motion more than this one. In this video, I will take you from drawing the parallax background layers to coding and make things work like this. However, most of the video will be around the parallax coding with JavaScript since it is our main topic. And if you're coming to this channel for the first time, please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my video in the future. And now, what are you waiting for? Let's get started. Okay, now this is a quick recording of how I have my own 2D background. First, to create layers like this, you need some skill in graphic and drawing with AI, editing with Photoshop. Second, having the idea for the game space, you can get them from a ton of 2D games on the internet. I can suggest you some keyword to refer to now. Let's start with layer 1. I call it the crowd layer. You can search 2D crowd, use these available results, or get the idea from them and draw your own. The layer 2, I will draw some object like rocks or crust. The keyword rock and crust tough illustrator is useful in this case because I want my background to look more detailed. The layer 3 will be a huge old forest with dense foliage, taking up more of the space above the game. The layer 4 and layer 5 will still be giant trees, however the color will fade through each layer, create a feeling of an immense forest hidden by four. Notice you should use less color for the background. Avoid using too many colors if you are not good at missing them. Take the Hollow Knight game for example. People have successfully built a beautiful world without using too much color. Remember to keep it as simple as possible. Suppose all is still too hard for you, don't worry. You can use my background, it's free, and you can download it on Google Drive easily. The link is below the description. So first, this is my setup for index.html5. I will add this sort to style.css and script.js. In this project, we're gonna work a lot with canvas element. So make sure you watch this video before we continue. But if you don't have too much time, I will give you the entire and quick concept of the canvas element. You just follow me, like procedure of the original setup. In the first step, you create a canvas element with the ID of my canvas. The step number two, in style.css, I will write some code to set up my parallax area that will appear on my web page. Step number three, in script.js, I'm gonna use getElementById method to return my canvas element to a specified value and write this line of code. 
Then you define the canvas width and the canvas height depending on your background size. Okay, we finished the setup. Now it's time to bring your images to the project. Come back to the HTML5, I will add the image tag and get them the source of my images. Don't forget the ID. In script.js, I use get element by ID method to return my image elements with the values. Let's animate our parallax background by creating a function called animate. To make sure that clear between every animation frame, we use the clear red method, which will clear the specified pixel within a given rectangle. I start to clear the upper left corner of the rectangle. So I put zero and zero right here. I want to clear the entire rectangle so that I put the canvas width and height right here. To draw our parallax background onto the canvas, we use the draw image method. In this case, we use this function with three arguments: the ctx dot draw image sx and xy. The first argument is the image you want to use, so I pass this my image. Then I pass this sx and xy. This is the coordinate of the image where you want to start to clip. In this case, I put it 0 and 0, so from the top left corner of the canvas. The request animation frame method to the browser does you wish to perform an animation and request the browser call a specified function once to update an animation before the next repaint. If I pass this animate, the name of this parent function, it will just run over and over, creating an animation loop. And right here, I just simply call it animate. Here are our result. Let's draw our remaining layer. Okay, so now I want the image move to the left automatically. Simply, I just call x as a variable and set it to 0. And every time animation loops run, I decrease by 1. It looks good. At this point, every frame will make the image move to the left by 1 pixel. If I increase the move speed and give it a value 5, You can see our image move faster, the higher move speed, the faster our image is. Next, this is the concept and lastly, scrolling game. So let's say this rectangle is our display screen. When our image moves to the left, there will come a time when it completely disappears from the screen. I want it seamless. So whenever our image reaches minus 823 pixel, which is the width of the image, I will set it back to 0, if not, continuously decrease by 1 pixel. So we got something called endlessly scrolling, but seems like it's not seamless. To solve this problem, I need to double my image. When the first image moves out of the screen, it will move back up to the second one. And available to scroll endlessly, yeah, we have a great idea. But now, how do we code for this concept? Well, I will draw the second image, but it start at the x2 position, where the x2 is the width of the image. Then, I will reset it behind the first one. It looks good. But I bet you suddenly realize something is wrong. There's a gap between the first image and the second one. This happened because the width of the image was not divisible by move speed. Let's say after 164 animation loops, with the move speed equal 5, the first image moved to the position minus 820 pixel, which is negative 164 multiple 5 and still larger than minus 823, so it hasn't reset yet. The next animation loop reaches minus 825 pixel, 
and then this statement is true resetting its position to 823 pixel now you understand why this leaves you a gap if you want to move this gap just simply upset your image to the left by move speed let's see what happened it looks so strange because it still has a small gap here let's analyze again and the 135 loop remember it executes two tasks the first image reset its position and the second one continue to move to the left in this loop this is the second factor that create a gap if you look closely this gap is exactly equal to the x2 position in the previous loop so you put it right here the same as right here and let's see no more gap so we come very close to creating a parallax background the next thing we need to do is animate all of these layers and let them move at different speeds as I said before, the parallax scrolling is a technique in which the background moves at a slower pace than the foreground adding the sense of the depth to your game first, check if 5 layers are animating correctly everything worked perfectly so how do I animate all of these layers at once the easiest way to understand is to copy these codes and repeat them for those layers the second way is cleaner than the first one using javascript classes to create a blueprint for the layer object then I will create 5 instance for the layer class it will have your code look more structured why should you use javascript class in this case? well you have so many similar objects and each of them has so many similar property and method just different values instead you have to define all of these properties one by one you just need to build a unique blueprint once by javascript class and when you call it it will create one instance of that object then you just declare the values and a complete object is generated Okay, don't waste your time. I will define a layer using class keyword, follow it by a custom capital letter named layer. Here you got the method called the constructor. The constructor in JavaScript is special method used to initialize objects. The constructor is called when the object of the class is created. It can be used to set initial value for the object properties. My constructor will receive three arguments: the image the speed modifier and the y position because we want to assign this layer and modify the speed which is that every layer scrolls at a different speed let's say I want my image to appear in the x coordinate and starts at the zero position this keyword refers to the object in this case this dot x at the x position property of the layer object we also have the vertical coordinate that will be set to the y position argument give our layer a width of 823 pixel and a height of 800 pixel the x2 property is where we draw the second image it must be equal to the width of the image for our endlessly scrolling purpose and don't forget the image property it receives the image argument to assign what image is rendered I do the same thing with move speed, it will be how fast my layer image moves. Okay, we have all properties we need. Now we move on to the custom method. I have the draw and update. The draw method uses the x and y position to render the image on the canvas. Meanwhile, the update method for endlessly scrolling of the image. This method is exactly what we did before. We just simply move the code right here and pass them right here. Remember to add the keyword this to each property. In the draw method, 
you move the line of code CTX dot draw image and pass it right here. Don't forget to add the keyword this to each property. All right, now we have all of the resources. Then I create a new constant variable and set it to new layer. The new keyword create a new object and it will automatically call the constructor method. In this method, it expects three arguments. So I try to pass all of this information of the crowd layer. From now on, every time I call the crowd object, it will include all properties and method related to the crowd layer. So I just go inside my animation loop, call the method update and draw. Here we go. We got the same results as before, but the code looks cleaner. I create the remaining layer by duplicating and pasting different images to each one. I call the update and draw method. But you can see there will be a lot of repetitive code here. Now I store file layer inside one array object. And thanks to useful method for each, this method will simply run through all of the elements in the array and execute the callback function. I have the object as a current value. It will refer to each object in the array and use the error function here. Then I call the update and the draw methods. And take a look at our result. Notice, if you want to create moving parallax background, you have to set different speed right here. The closer the layer, the faster it moves. So we have a very cool parallax background. Okay, this video is too long. I have to say goodbye. See you in my next video. In the future, I will make more videos about coding games like this. Look forward to it.